Hi everyone, uh, today is May 12, 2021. We are in sunny California today, beautiful day here. Uh, we will talk about varnishes, but before that, I want to remind you that um, next week on uh, May 19th, George and I will talk here uh, about our least favorite uh, subject. It's about uh, uh, scratching the canvas. But the most important, actually, how to protect your canvases from damage. So again, that would be on May 19th, uh, 10 o'clock Pacific time again. Um, and um, on May 19th, we will have, um, no, I think it's May, May 22nd, I'm sorry. So May 22nd, we will have here um, a group uh, meeting and so it's uh, we call this cohorts of the cohorts of the uh, natural pigments or uh, painting best practices mm -hmm. that would be registered both of these events will be registered on painting best practices website so please be sure it's not on you uh, uh, what is it um, YouTube but it will be on painting best practices work uh, um, website so uh, today let's start about uh, talk about varnishes so uh, who knows us so then you do know then uh, the very often we are talking about um, uh, danger of the varnishes I mean I'm sorry solvents and uh, but unfortunately the part what you can escape uh, with varnishes it's solvents and so we will talk today about pluses and minuses, but the uh, major thought what we want to give you today, so you absolutely need varnish. And so that's why on our website, we have several of them because every each of them will give you different look, different appearance. And, uh, and we will try to cover today everything uh, possible about varnishes. Like always, we will talk about um, every each of them and you can uh, post your uh, questions immediately. And so George and I will see this online and answer hopefully everything. Okay, so let's go. So here we, uh, you will see, this is uh, five conservar varnishes. And um, so, uh, we base them on uh, specific formulas uh, uh, based on uh, conservators um, uh, formulas <coughs> and so let's start with probably with isolating varnish and um, isolating finishing varnish and uh, it's based on uh, larapal resin and this is uh, quite stable today we will talk almost uh, all of our uh, raisins or re resins uh, in the varnishes are uh, quite stable so compared to historical which we will touch too so uh, this one is uh, based on Larapal A81 uh, and um, it has a UV protector and um, uh, it's a uh, it's mixture of solvents and um, uh, Larapal A. Uh, do you want to add something uh, to that um, A, uh, 81 uh, resin, George? Yeah, so this is a, uh, a BASF resin. It's a, an aldehyde resin that uh, is used in, in a wide variety of paints, uh, commercial paints, but it's a very stable resin and has been used in, um, in, in museums and conservation to, to varnish uh, pictures for now at least a couple of decades um, and probably even a little bit longer than that. A little bit later we will show you how the appearance of that uh, uh, varnish of each of them. Okay. So finishing okay. varnish. So finishing varnish it's uh, based on uh, regal res resin and it's again synthetic <coughs> resin. Uh, very stable one and um, I, Georgie, I will try to pronounce this hydrocarbon resin. <laughs> yep, that's correct. Yeah, and uh, it's not cross links, uh, which uh, makes that um, uh, varnish very good one, because what it means, so then it will, um, 
it will dissolve in the same solvent what um, uh, the what you uh, what we put the resin in the solvent and uh, if you need to uh, re remove that varnish so you can actually remove the same solvent so, so yeah the regal res resin um, was originally proposed to be used in um, uh, for varnishing paintings in museums in 1991 uh, by Dr. René Delarie <clears throat> of the National Gallery in Washington. So he proposed using this particular resin. Again, this resin is in commercial use, um, has been for uh, quite a number of decades now. Um, mostly, and this may be surprising, mostly it's used in hot melt uh, glues, uh, but it's a very, the color is very stable and especially with the UV stabilizer, as all conservar varnishing uh, resins contain a UV stabilizer. So let's talk about next one. So the mar varnish. So of course the mar um, is the natural resin and uh, it was most popular in 19th century and it's still actually quite popular. It, uh, we will show you later. It, uh, in appearance, it's the most glossy one uh, among the old the conservar varnishes. And um, the bad part about this, the mar varnish oxidizes. And so, and again, um, become, As a, yes. Yeah, just in all, all natural resins tend to uh, oxidize and hence cross-link uh, faster than the synthetic resins. Um, but it's yellowing. Which, yeah, also yellowing and then eventually becoming brittle and, and so forth. And then needs to be removed. Um, uh, what was found uh, back in the 1990s that if DeMar, uh, if DeMar resin is coupled with a UV stabilizer, uh, it, will, uh, it will last a lot longer than if it had not had a UV stabilizer. And, That's why um, we put here, and you will see here is with, yeah. with UV stabilizer. And what they found is that if the, if the varnish or the painting is protected from UV light, the Damar resin will actually, or Dammer, as I pronounce it, and my, uh, Tanya pronounces it as Damar, and I know a lot of people, Dammer or Damar, and you see the spelling on, on is, is Dammer is the two M's. Um, but anyway, the, uh, uh, if, it, if it's protected by UV stabilizer, it will last a lot longer than had it not been. So that's why we included it. And it's still a good, uh, a good resin to use, uh, mainly because it has very high gloss, as Tanya mentioned. So it's, it's a different choice. The bad part, of course, uh, after um, oxidizing and cross-linking, so then uh, 25, 50 years later when somebody will come and remove your varnish. So they need to, uh, to use uh, very aggressive uh, solvents, which is probably will take uh, one part of toluene, one part of acetone, which could damage um, uh, your uh, painting. And so that's why we will show you today <coughs> how to, uh, to apply correct. So to, to protect your uh, painting from your varnish. So next one would be polymeric. It's one of the probably the, sta the most stable varnishes. And uh, so the, the good part is, um, uh, so it's, uh, it's transparent, complete, uh, completely clear. It's, um, it's look um, matte compared to uh, all other varnishes. And um, the, what else we can say about George? Uh, well, this is an acrylic. Uh, this is an acrylic resin, and um, it's a well-known resin. It's been around. Wow, I think uh, almost fifty, probably longer than fifty years. Um, as Tanya mentioned, it's very stable. Um, it has been in use for varnishing paintings for just about that same period of time. It's an excellent uh, uh, varnish resin, um, and that's why we've created this conservar varnish with uh, UV, again, again with UV stabilizer. The bad part, uh, the remove of that varnish uh, will take uh, very uh, strong uh, solvents, which is toluene, xylene, and so then this is the bad part about this. But again, it's, it's always pluses and minuses. So, okay, next one, acrylic varnish. So based on, uh, 
on this uh, the resin B54 uh, and um, and I will say that thermoplastic <laughs> acrylic yes <laughs> yes and again it's um, it's high molecular um, uh, varnish and so uh, the hints is so then again it will look uh, much uh, much more flat than uh, other varnishes and uh, what else Yes, this, uh, this particular uh, varnish is based on a, uh, a varnish that was introduced in the 1960s called Incralac. This is a reintroduction of that particular varnish, which is mostly, mostly designed for varnishing or applying a clear coat over copper. We introduced this because some artists are very interested in painting on copper, but uh, they want to leave some of the copper exposed. This copper exposed uh, will, of course, oxidize. It will, uh, it will tend to darken. It may not change color, but um, much. Uh, but it will lose its its sheen, and so this will help protect it. We've got a sample of it going. It's actually been out in in the California sun outdoors for the past, I think, five years. And um, no change. And there's uh, whereas the the cop the bare copper is already pitted and blackened, um, the uh, the the varnish actually is still held up. So it's a, it's a remarkable varnish. We uh, if you're if you're covering your entire copper with a painting, then use one of the other varnishes um, because the the set of uh, of solvents in this particular varnish is, is fairly aggressive. And um, so we, we try to limit, uh, we try to recommend limiting the choice of this particular uh, varnish. And you know, uh, here at Natural Pigments and, uh, and Artifacts um, uh, website, artifacts.biz, uh, we sell copper panels. It's quite popular lately. And of course, uh, the latest trend is to, uh, to paint on part of the, the, you know, board and part of the uh, copper uh, board leaf uh, visible. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, of course, acrylic uh, varnish would be probably your best choice for that. But again, um, before uh, you start doing something, always, we're always saying then always check first. And then if it will work for you, it's again, always depend where you live, what the environment and so the, what's the weather and uh, your conditions. So, and um, the last but not least, so we have Neil's best dumber varnish. And uh, so this one is uh, in bigger uh, bottles. So then uh, every each of them, uh, it's uh, in four ounces, and I will mention uh, a little bit later, this is an eight. It doesn't have UV protector. So we didn't put this because that was based actually on old formula. George took the Neil's best mastic varnish and just re remade this. And so he made um, uh, exactly uh, the same with uh, uh, the Mar. And you will see this is the most glossy year uh, varnish. And so beautiful one, uh, very easy to apply. Uh, again, uh, just need to remember if you use that one, so then probably in 25, 50 years, again, depend where your uh, uh, paint was kept. So uh, you will need to remove. And so uh, to remove that, like we already said before, so it will need uh, uh, aggressive varnish. So or uh, solvents. Solvent. Keep in mind, this is that we, we made this varnish for historical reasons. Uh, it's a very interesting uh, look to it. You'll see, we'll show you, we'll, we're going to do a comparison in just a few moments uh, between the different varnishes in terms of their gloss. And, um, and um, so it's, it's a specialized use. We don't normally recommend this varnish for your average picture, but for those, of, those individuals interested in using this uh, and the very high gloss it achieves, it's quite good. And we're going to suggest a way to use this that is actually safer Yes. Um, and but so that might be that, of interest. Give me a second about to explain uh, why do we have that small amount? Uh, because again, so uh, all our varnishes came uh, to a lot to life after when we had so many classes already uh, uh, on the country and outside the country. And every time we will talk about varnishing, 
uh, people will uh, tell us horrible, horrible stories about uh, their uh, varnishing experience. And so, and they would blame actually the company or the, the varnish itself. And so, and uh, George was always trying to say them, it's nothing wrong with varnish. It's about how you apply first and the second where you take that varnish. Because companies uh, these days, uh, guys, believe it or not, but every company who make the varnish make excellent varnishes. Whatever right now, whatever company you use, they're making best possible because technology is this uh, you know years very uh, very or it, it, uh, knowledge about uh, uh, varnishes is very excellent and good. So. But the thing is, when varnish is made, it's, um, you know, it's staying in, in factory. Then factory, uh, so the, the store is buying and putting them uh, on the shelf in the store and it's, it will be another five years. And then you buy for discount gallon of that and then you're, you know, keep, keep, uh, keeping in your uh, studio for another five years. And then one day when you're ready for varnishing, you, you're applying the varnish and it's beating up or it's behaving uh, weird. And so then, then you call us and saying like, what's wrong with this varnish? This is why, because um, we decided not only give you range of the varnishes because again today we will show you how every each of them look different but we put in smallest possible uh, uh, jars or bottles in this case because we had in jars too so um in bottle so then it will be just for your one or two sessions and so and it will be enough buy fresh one we we made that quite inexpensive and so and again if you today we will teach you buy several of them try on your pieces what you know because every each of you paint different uh have different applications so, so then make several strips of uh you know different varnishes see which one you like and then stuck with this one and uh even more we went even more crazy we put the date here and it's not expiration date because basically on varnish you really don't have expiration day because it, it needs to to work years and years and years but we will put the date when we make it so then at least you know how fresh it is and so then uh, you do know then it's not 10 years old it's not even one year old we're making very small batches so then then you do know that every time you buy from us, you know, then you buy a fresh one. On top of that, of course, we do have uh, sets. And um, do we have a photograph of kids? No. <laughs> that says how we were preparing for that uh, session. But anyway, so on our website, we do have a kits. Instead of if you don't want to buy uh varnish or you think then you will need in three weeks but you don't want uh, want to buy today when you put uh, everything you buy together so we have a kids and so where we sell separate resin in the jar we sell the uh, solvent uh, in the bottle we have uv protector uh is a as a uh, the small tiny uh, veil and what we will do when you're ready to varnish night before you pour uh, the solvent in your jar you mix it you put the tinovine uh, and uh, so uv protector and so the next day it's ready to to varnish so therefore you know then your uh, uh, set is absolutely i mean your varnish is absolutely fresh and um, ready to go yeah leslie just put a link to <laughs> thank the, you leslie <laughs> to the uh, dammer varnish kit uh, in the comments there we have three of them. We have one for Eagle Rest. And again, today we will give you all strategies how to apply. So Regal Rest, Lara Paul, and Damar. So uh, dumb. then, we, <laughs> Dumber, Dumber. So, uh, so uh, another thing I want to mention, this I didn't forget. So, um, so we have special brush. And in our classes, we are teaching you because uh, sometimes, uh, uh, you know, 
we see the videos um, uh, artists doing and they applying these horrible brushes where the hair uh, is missing because you kind of like what we hear very often artists saying on their videos you don't want to use good brush because you will destroy that anyway it's not necessary to to uh, you know to destroy but what good about so what you need to have actually quite thin brush like wide maybe but thin then it will not be a lot of varnish uh, on so we have rublev brush and it's um uh, you know uh, it's synthetic you do need to uh to keep uh, that brush as uh, precious as your other brushes and so and again we will teach you uh, on our website we have all information how you can clean brushes um, after varnishing and because on some of them very easy to remove the varnish from uh, from the uh, brush with same solvent for example like regal res but if we are talking about acrylic or uh, polymeric varnishes it's a different story so so did we cover that yes so now to great. the <laughs> now to this okay. uh, very complex chart and i'm going to take tanya out of the picture there okay. so you can see what's going on um this chart uh what we did is we took all of our varnishes and the top of the chart you'll see the six varnishes that we discussed and we measured the gloss on on a black card so we applied the varnish one coat and we measure the gloss. The higher the gloss units, the glossier the varnish is. So you can see there is a, there's a pretty stark difference between, let's say, the Conservar polymeric varnish, which is the B, Paraloid B72 resin, and that of the Neil's Best Dammer varnish, which uh, had a gloss unit of over 66. Now, what's also interesting is that when you apply two coats, either of the same varnish or of one coat uh, as an isolating varnish underneath the finishing varnish, and that's, by the way, what we're, we're, we're using the terms isolating varnish, not to isolate paint layers, but to isolate the uh, in-between paint layers, that is. We don't recommend that at all but rather isolating the finishing varnish from, uh, from the paint layer. And that's a different strategy uh, that we sometimes recommend. Uh, it depends on what you're trying to do and what the condition of the painting is. But you can also see in this bottom area where we have two coats of varnish, you can see the, uh, let's say for instance, on the very low end, you can see that uh, we used uh, the Conservar Isolating Finishing Varnish as the isolating coat underneath, and then on top, the Conservar Acrylic Varnish. And you can see that has a very, it still has very low gloss. So what we're trying to, what we're trying to show you here is that you can have two different varnishes, one that has a very low gloss and one that has a very high gloss, but it's always the top varnish that determines the appearance. Can, and, can we do this, uh, George, if we will show already slides and return back to that? Uh, yeah. can, can we do that? So yeah, then uh, then artists will see what, what we're talking about. So here's, we are talking about least um, glass uh, varnish, which is Paraloid B72. Uh, well, in, in our uh, line, it's called Conservar Polymeric Varnish. And you will see on the bottom is the one coat only. And um, on the top, it's two coats, but even that still quite flat. So what you're looking at on the left side of the, uh, of the is a picture of a black card. So it has a little bit of a texture and um, and then uh, on the bottom is one coat and then the top is two coats. And what we did is we photographed an LED light. And, uh, and how distinct or in, un, indistinct the image is determines how much matte or, or, or gloss a particular varnish is. And so you can see that even with two coats, the, the, the gloss of the polymeric varnish doesn't change much. Uh, it, it gets a little bit glossier, but not a whole lot. Let's go to the next one here. Yes, Conservar Acrylic. 
and it's based on Paraloid B44. And again, you see it's still quite flat on first uh, uh, on the bottom uh, of the uh, screen. You can see one coat on the on the top is second coat. Still, the 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 light is diffused, and so then it's uh, quite flat. Let's go next one. So here's Larapal. And you see uh, quite a bit difference here. So on the one uh, uh, one layer, you can see it's very flat. The the way of the minute you put a second, uh, it's uh, it's correcting a lot of um, uh, unevenness. That's why we're always talking about. So Larapal is very good one for isolating. And so, and then if you have unevenness <coughs> on your uh, painting, so then Larapal will have, hopefully, it's again, we're always saying then it's depend how you apply every time. So then we'll correct uh, a lot of mistakes or unevenness, uh, une uneven sheen on your paint. Here's Rigolas. And, uh, and you can see just because it's low molecular. And so when uh, we were applying the varnish and um, Apparently, I did a little bit uh, uh, more li liquidy than it's supposed to be. So, uh, because we are always saying that you don't pour your varnishes on your uh, painting. So, just apply the minimum amount on your uh, brush. So, second, uh, second coat is uh, more glossy. Let's go next one. Look at this one. So, uh, this is our Conservar Dummer. And, um, and of course, the comparison between uh, this one and let's say then polymeric is huge. You can see how then the lights become uh, already quite pronounced uh, on this one. And so, and the last one is Neil's best Tamar varnish. And you can see this is so glossy compared to the any other before. Later we will. Uh, oh, uh, you have. You want to go? Yes, and uh, uh, do you want to? Sh yes, exactly. Yeah, Thank Sorry. you. So, mm -hmm. so here's the um, uh, first coat. Uh, we apply uh, Laura Paul. You can see obviously because it's already under the the second coat. The second coat you can see from the uh, top to bottom. So the first one is polymeric. You can see how diffused um, um, reflection yeah. reflection is and so acrylic one is quite matte too but then you go to uh, Dummer and you go to uh, Regal Res and so they are uh, Regal Res not as um, glossy, glossy mm -hmm. as a Damar but uh, still um, uh, not even close to then let's say like uh, polymeric or acrylic so you can see, really, uh, what we're trying to show here uh, is a lot of people, a lot of artists don't understand that there isn't just one varnish out there. A lot of most companies sell one or two varnishes on their entire line, and here we're trying to uh, we're trying to show you that the choice of varnish is largely an aesthetic choice. It's how you want your painting to look like. And you can see there's a tremendous var uh, uh, variance between each of the different varnishes. And that's what's important to uh, keep in mind. All of these varnishes can be used on paintings. Some have certain advantages over others in certain types of circumstances, such as if, you're paint if you have an oil painting with a lot of sinking in, you may want to use an undercoat of an isolating finishing varnish or a polymeric varnish. Uh, and then if you like that, you can stay with that uh, because those two types of varnish resins will tend to prevent uh, more sinking in. You know how it is when you have a, a painting that's sinking in uh, and dead matte areas, it's very uneven, it's blotchy. And so we always recommend correcting that only with the varnish, not by oiling out. So you, but you'll, you'll find that certain varnishes, like possibly the Conservar finishing varnish, which is Regal Res, or the Dammer varnish will tend to sink in and just repeat the same blotchiness. Okay. So to avoid that, use a polymeric varnish or use the isolating finishing varnish with the Laurel Paul resin in it. Use that as a first coat or as, as the final varnish. It's up to you. 
Casey, so the, you're absolutely correct. So many choices and that that's why we are doing this. It's every time we are saying that, you know, because before we heard, uh, you know, artists call and they just stuck with one gum var, which on our line, uh, it would be conservar finishing varnish. And so, and uh, it's like uh, one, one, you know, uh, choice for, um, or one, what is it, way for everybody. But, you know, you guys call us and you ask about different ones and that's why we are giving you this. So, and uh, uh, remember one, uh, and again, we will definitely uh, mention that later, but with Regal Res or with uh, Gumvar, uh, just because it's very easy um, uh, soluble. So then the, when you put first layer of the varnish and when you apply the second, you already picking up the first one. That is not the greatest idea. That's why uh, uh, you, you know, you had the uh, guys, you call us and you ask about so many, uh, you know, you're upset, then it's not even, um, you know, surface. That's why, because you definitely, you really, uh, by applying second layer with the brush, with uh, 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 finishing varnish or with gum var, you picking up first one. So um, the strategy will be uh, uh, like this. You can put or Larapal um, varnish first, and then you apply Regal Res second. Yes. So let's move on to, yes. we're going to get to all of your questions. I, I see this, there's about lots and yes. lots of questions. About we're going to get to this, but I, we wanted to show you. Who uh, better will tell about varnishes than customers? Yes, yeah, so we wanted to show you a customer's uh, a video on, on her use of our varnishes. And I think you'll find it very delightful. Um, and we her did. And her <laughs> name is uh, Jennifer Marie Keller. I hope she's uh, listening today. But let's go right away. She did this on time. We just were preparing for that session. And so she put that uh, uh, on YouTube. And so we stole it. So, oh no, we didn't steal it. <laughs> Add her permission. So let's go on to uh, Jennifer. I ordered some new varnish from Natural Pigments, so I'm going to test that out now. Ha ha ha. I've been so excited to open this, but I've been waiting until I got all my work out and seeing what I needed to varnish in the first place. So now I get to see it. I love it, it's so exciting when art supplies come to my door. Okay, these, so it's two different varnishes. And this is, I don't remember if I said this from Natural Pigments. And I've, I've used a bunch of different varnishes before, but it's always one varnish that I put over the, the painting. This is, we have an isolating varnish, which I would use this first. And then when that dries, I put a finishing varnish over it. So like I said, I'm gonna just see how this goes. And then if I like, how these varnishes work. I'll do a whole video about them, but I'm just, I'm just testing it today. Oh, and I also got a varnishing brush as well. Cause all of my varnishing brushes are, let me know if you have this problem. Um, but they always get gum. I can never get all the varnish out of the furrow and it just gets stuck right here. That like gumminess. So then the bristles don't move as easily. And I've only used soap and water before because I try and not use turpentine because I hate using turpentine or minerals, any kind of paint thinner. But I'm going to do it this time because I don't want to just keep buying new brushes. So varnishing brush, varnishes. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> so I'm looking at these and look how nicely that moves. In there, the varnishes I've used before are Damar varnish, and at least the ones I've used. Well, I've used ones before where they're manufactured, they're made ready to go, and then other ones where you melt 
the crystals, the DeMar crystals in turpentine, and you make your own varnish from it. But they've all been thick. And I've done different things like heat the varnish so it'll get thinner or you can thin it out to a turpentine. Turpen My kids struck me through the doorway. <laughs> um, but this is, I feel like this looks already perfect. So yeah, I'm excited to try, to try these out. Are you excited too? You want to see how mom's paintings look with some varnish on them? I can already smell the varnish just through the jars. They're glass jars and everything, but ugh, I do not like smelly materials like varnish, turpentine, all that stuff. Ugh. But I need to wait before I do this so Eric can. Yeah, when Eric comes home so he can watch Jude. I know, because you're not allowed to be around the varnish. And then, yeah, life of a parent, a parent painter working around, working around the baby schedule. is now my new favorite varnish, hands down. It's awesome. So this is the first piece that I varnished and it just has such a nice even coat on it. It was so easy. <laughs> so this is the one on panel and this is the one on canvas. Same thing, so it is glossy as you can see, but I love it. They both look awesome. I contacted the company because I just used the isolating varnish and I think it looks great. Um, I asked if they recommend doing the other one, the finishing varnish. And they said, if I were to use this, wait two days, but if I like how it looks with just the other one, there's no need to to do this one. So I'm gonna skip that step for those those two paintings that I just varnished. These are my other paintings that are ready to be varnished. So I have them all set up and prepared. All dust, hair, dirt, anything has been removed off of them. So they are ready to get varnished. I got this beautiful bowl from my uncle-in-law that lives in Texas and it's a handmade hand painted bowl that I think is really nice. So I've now made this my varnishing bowl. Nice to have like each step of the process be fun and beautiful. varnishing went great. There were a few paintings where the varnish didn't go on evenly, where it kept sinking into places, which is why they had that option for the two-step varnish. So for those, I'm going to wait. I contacted, contacted the company and they said two or three days wait after doing the isolating varnish and then you can do the finishing varnish. So for those paintings, it's going to get a coat of this. So far, super pleased. It's been the smoothest varnishing process I've ever done. I really love this new stuff. These paintings have dried now for a couple, a few days, and they look so good varnished. I love how the varnish makes the painting look so it just looks like you painted it yesterday, like it's still wet and the paint strokes are all juicy. And yeah, I love it. Varnishing is like magic. I'm also going through and checking the evenness of the varnish, see if there's any parts that look uneven, meaning that some parts will stay glossy and other parts will stay 
or become glossy, I mean, in other parts will stay matte. And if that's the case on any of these, then I'm going to do that second step process with the varnish. So that second bottle. Also with having these dry, I'm keeping them face down like this. So any dust or debris or anything wouldn't get stuck to the surface as the varnish is drying. It's funny though, looking at these, cause there, this was one example where I thought I would have to, it looked uneven in some spots when I put the varnish on and I thought I'd have to use that second step. But these are all looking pretty good. Like they evened out while drying or something. That one's good. I love how this painting looks. It looks so vibrant now, now that, now that it has that varnish on it. And then, you know, besides just having everything look really, the paint look very fresh on it, it also protects the painting as well. Yeah, all of these are excellent. I didn't expect that. I thought I'd have to use that second step, but these all look really good. Also, my varnishing brush is in still perfect condition, it seems like. So that method of using turpentine and then washing it with soap and water is perfect. Nothing's left in the furrow. And yeah, it's great. I can keep using this again and again and again and again and again and again and again. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jennifer. That was great. So love it. Every time I watch this and so I just now uh, notice how organized studio you have. It's unbelievable. Usually <laughs> it's all, it's like our studio here too. Every time I clean up and so then a couple <clears throat> days later, it's uh, horrible. So we have a lot of questions right now. And so, and some of them absolutely like it's every time we have um, uh, any session about anything but it's uh, oily now uh, uh, popping up. So let's cover right now. Uh, <clears throat> you want so me to start with the, f I'll start from the very top here. Uh, no, let's, uh, let's do not because we definitely will not cover all of them, but okay. let's m a major one. So then oiling out, you mentioned and somebody already pick up, if, uh, of course, yep. uh, yes. So the, the reason why we do not recommend oiling out as a final layer is what does oil do? it yellows okay that's just a natural that's what oil does naturally it will yellow over time and so adding an, a layer of oil over your entire painting will uh, increase the yellowing of that painting so so and i know that's recommended by some individuals some artists recommend oiling out to even out the the gloss of the painting in the final uh, when it's all done but we don't recommend that even out the gloss in with the varnish itself so that's that's the recommendation there um, now uh, choosing the type of varnish may be important if you if you have lots of matte areas matte areas denote greater porosity or absorbency of the paint surface so low molecular weight varnish resins will tend to sink in such as the regal res or what we call our conservar finishing varnish and uh, dammer or conservar dammer varnish. Those resins will tend to sink in more so than let's say our conservar isolating finishing varnish, which has the Laurel Paul resin or any of the acrylic uh, resins such as the conservar polymeric or acrylic uh, varnishes. So using that as, an, uh, as, a, as, a, as a coating, maybe it's the final varnish or if you, if you want something glossier than let's say a polymeric or, uh, an, uh, or a Laropol resin, then you apply something different over that, either the dammer or the Regal Res, which is the Conservar finishing varnish. So that's a strategy. Uh, again, you can achieve the gloss level you want, and, uh, and, and, but you can still avoid a lot of the sinking in. And that's the reason for recommending sometimes two coats one other recommendation there too by the way and that is when you have an isolating coat and then on top of that a finishing coat 
The isolating coat is protected from getting dirty, dusty, and everything else, which is why varnishes tend to wear out overall. And so varnishes, uh, think of varnishes as disposable paint layers. Eventually they're going to yellow, they're going to become brittle, they're going to crack, they're going to get dirty, and then it's, they're going to have to be replaced. Using synthetic resins tends to prolong that effect to longer than the usual 25 to 50 years. It could, might, might offer protection for a painting up to 100 years, as an example. So that means less removal of varnishes, which is always uh, potentially damaging for the painting. Putting an isolating layer, as an example, will help protect the paint layer when you go to remove the finishing layer, which is the top layer. So that's another strategy. It's not uh, imperative that one does that, but it's a strategy to help protect your painting and uh, to avoid the, the, propens the, 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 uh, the inclination of some paint films and the varnishes to sink in. So UV stabilizer, this is, yes, it's Tinovin. We use Tinovin, but we use different ones. Tinovin is a range of UV what? stabilizers, and we use different uh, UV stabilizers that are paired or matched with the particular resin. So that's important to consider. That's not something without some chemistry background that uh, you would be able to do, but uh, we, we do provide all of these ingredients separately. If you, and, and we do this to allow artists to experiment because we want you to experiment. Uh, but most of you don't want to do that, and that's fine. And that's why we provide both the kits as well as the, um, uh, the ready-made varnishes. So can we, uh, now let's talk about uh, varnishing watercolors, uh, egg tempera, and um, uh, it's completely different application than in, uh, in oils. Although all of them can be uh, applied to uh, egg tempera or varnish or uh, watercolors, but George will say. Um, so in terms of, I, I know a lot of artists who uh, who are watercolor artists. They they hate putting glass over their paintings. Uh, they think it, it affects or or destroys the appearance of their paintings. And uh, yes, that that may be the case. However. Varnishing uh, a watercolor painting uh, alters the appearance of that painting dramatically. So just keep that in mind. So if you like the look of your painting as without a varnish, putting a varnish is going to alter the colors. It's going to darken the colors. And one thing to keep in mind always that it's non-removable essentially. So once you put uh, once you put that varnish onto a watercolor painting, you're not going to be able to remove it without completely destroying or almost destroying the painting. So it's become of the part because of it, that it sinks system. into the into the paper into the in, into the painting itself and becomes part of the painting. So that's part of the problem. The other thing you have to consider is that paper. Uh, although there may be a UV stabilizer in the varnish resin, it has limited, uh, it doesn't absorb UV light. What it does is it, uh, it prolongs the life of the varnish resin, okay? So uh, UV absorbers is a different class of materials in varnishes. We normally don't put them in artist uh, varnishes because they tend to yell over time because that's what they're doing there. They're designed to, to uh, absorb ultraviolet rays. So although we say UV stabilizer, it's stabilizing the varnish resin uh, from UV light, but it doesn't necessarily absorb the UV light. Well, the unfortunate part of paper or cellulose fibers is that paper is highly susceptible to UV light. And so it would tend to degrade faster if it doesn't have any protection. And that's why we always recommend putting UV absorbing glass or acrylic, some kind of plastic over your watercolor paintings. And I'm sorry, we don't have the magic, you know, bullet that solves all problems. We just don't have that at this point in time. Although George is working on that uh, one specifically for the, uh, for the egg tempera yeah. uh, artist. So if you want, yeah. We can... be, because we started 20 years ago with egg tempera artists, they are most, close to our chest. So that's why we, he's still trying to do this. 
And I know we have a couple of um, a couple of questions from our dear friend Ku. Thank you, Ku, for for joining us. Um, the uh, one of the things you asked here: Can you add your uh, dammer and UV stabilizer to an egg oil emulsion and add more sparkle and speed drying without adding yellowing or brittleness? Here's the pro Here's the point: We never recommend adding varnish or any resinous materials except if you're, if you're an oil painter or you're an, an egg oil uh, emulsion painter, to your paint. And the simple reason is that these resins have a very different solubility than does, let's say, a tempera or oil paint. Now, imagine this. You add, let's say, for instance, you followed someone's directions and you're, you're spraying retouch varnish over every layer of painting or between painting, or you're adding that, that resin to your medium. I know there's a question about that later uh, in the comments. So, uh, and, or you're like you suggested here, Ku, you add this uh, dammer varnish, even with the UV stabilizer to your egg oil emulsion. Now, let's say you decide to, um, to varnish your painting uh, with any one of these varnishes and someone later on decides to remove that varnish because it's getting dirty and old and so forth. So they have to use a solvent to remove that varnish. And once they do that, that solvent will uh, seep into or be absorbed by the paint film where it will cause that dammer resin or whatever other resin you're using to swell and possibly cause delamination of the paint film. So. That's why we don't recommend that. And uh, we don't recommend any resinous materials in paint films for that very reason. Another reason, of course, is because resins dry through uh, solvent evaporation, which is very different from oil, which dries through oxidative polymerization. And so we often see cracking of oil paint films and even oil egg oil emulsion paint films uh, because of the resin, because you have different drying mechanisms uh, going on in the same paint film. They're not homogenous. So you always keep that in mind. So unfortunately, we don't have a really good answer for that. Um, certainly, we don't recommend adding UV stabilizers into uh, paint um, because uh, they're specifically matched to the kinds of polymers that are found in, uh, in, in varnishes or in, in clear coats or in paints that are used in manufacturing. So we don't recommend those kinds of materials uh, so, in the actual paint film. So let's talk about, of course, we do need to talk about timing. So uh, first of all, you, it's uh, again, you go to our classes, come to us. We, uh, we still hope to have a um, um, live class, but uh, at any point you can uh, actually go to painting best practices and purchase our classes uh, already recorded. So, but, we prove you there that uh, six months is the smallest amount you have before you start varnish. And we have all signs behind that. But, um, so if you do need to varnish um, uh, early, so again, there's uh, uh, some strategies again, because we do understand all of you paint <coughs> different on all on different, uh, um, um, substrates and so uh, the canvas will uh, look different from the board and of course so but uh, the somebody asked about how long do you wait for first layer and the second layer so the first layer you apply and again always remember about temperature and uh, and relative humidity in in your studio at the time you're um, uh, varnishing and so give it at least 24 uh, hours before you put another layer so don't hurry you paint it so long why to hurry up on the last uh, stage of your painting so give it 24 hours maybe 48 and then um, of course protect your painting from uh, from dust it's um, it's amazing so even in studio so I will show you a couple of the slides what we uh, Josh already showed where is that I Turn can't the other way. okay Okay, right turn, turn it the other way if you want. Okay. So right here. Mm -hmm. So this is varnish and you can see uh, the dust already uh, uh, and uh, the diff uh, like between first, okay, here, first layer and the second layer 
I had only um, one day, but the dust already uh, just embedded. Um, and again, here you can see very well because it's uh, uh, the boards, uh, I mean, the, the uh, plates like this, but um, maybe it will not be as visible uh, on your painting. And so, and then uh, give another coat. So another question was about bubbles. How do you uh, avoid the bubbles? First of all, switch the brush. The bubbles appeared because if you will put the um, different um, bristle, so then in the bristle, the, the air uh, pop up. And so that's why you have uh, uh, bubbles. Uh, so what, we, what you may want to do is uh, what Tanya is recommending, of course, the thin brush could be wide, but thin is to load the least amount of varnish onto yes. your brush. That's so important. We see people pouring varnishes. We see them loading the brush so that it's dripping off the brush. L load the brush, wipe it off on the edge of the container, and then apply it and apply it as thinly as possible. So when you say bubbles, uh, you may be referring to actual air bubbles in the varnish. That's, of course, you need to avoid stirring up things. But uh, you may also be talking about beating and crawling that's varnishes. Different. And that's a different phenomenon. That can largely be avoided by applying the varnish as thinly as possible. And, and if you see an area beat up, you can take the brush and kind of just gently scrub it in. Not hard, uh, because that actually leads to another question about using sponges, yes. which we absolutely don't recommend. And the, f the real simple reason for that is because the sponges are much more abrasive. And remember, you are using a solvent. So it's a, it's a varnish in a solvent and uh, varnish resin in a solvent. And so it will, uh, it will uh, uh, any solvent will tend to uh, loosen up the top layer of the paint film. And so avoid that and avoid lots of abrasion. So Andrea, I see. So since we are talking about this, you said then when using uh, synthetic brushes, they leave a mark where the stroke stops. Um, again, so that means you probably uh, choose just... wrong, uh, wrong uh, varnish for you. So because uh, maybe it doesn't like <clears throat> like I, I just started show here. Um, I was doing several uh, uh, varnishes, and you see that here's poly. Okay, where is that? Okay, here's polymeric. And uh, I use exactly the same brush for uh, all of them, but just because it, it, the uh, table was tilted. And so it started um, like moving var varnish uh, around direction. And uh, on some uh, varnishes, I was easy, uh, was able to, uh, to move it brush and uh, to fix that. On some of them, you can't. So it's um, again uh, back to uh, small s sizes of our varnishes. So you can check another one. Maybe that was the wrong one, but usually uh, by brushing with very soft but thin should not be much uh, difficulties. To, yeah, to a, lo fix it. a lot of the lap marks can be avoided simply by, again, not loading the brush up with too much varnish and then feathering the brush stroke out. That means you just you just lightly feather it out. Don't stop, but just feather it out. And then when you come to the next, mm -hmm. uh, when, you, when you apply the next layer, or not layer, but row of, of varnish, you just meet it up with a feathering uh, stroke again. Susan, I think we, uh, uh, I'm reading again because I uh, was answering the, the first, so you said, I mean, the how long to wait to uh, paint to dry before the, you uh, put this isolating? Six months. That's what we recommend. So now, six months, and then you can uh, apply uh, isolating varnish. Or, or any, any of the varnishes. Or any varnishes. There is an article, by the mm -hmm. way, folks, on, um, in the Painting Best Practices website, paintingbestpractices.com. There's an article under discussions, and it talks about how long do you wait. And uh, there are some caveats there, okay, to the six months. But here's the issue. I know that some, some manufacturers have recommended using their varnishes immediately, you know, soon after, and they say you can test with the fingernail test when it's touch dry. That's really, that may be correct for some types of paintings and some types of painters. 
because if you paint very thinly and you paint, let's say, on a very good surface that, and, and, the, and the paint film dries quickly, you may be able to get away with something like that. But it doesn't apply to all painters because that kind of recommendation assumes that all painters and paintings are alike, and they are not. So that's why we have the six month recommendation and that's because oil paint, and that's again for oil paint, for a tempera painting, it could be earlier, but you still need to allow that painting to cure or to polymerize over time uh, because they need that. So Andre, you ask um, if I want uh, low glass varnish for oil painting that has five, ten, year, ten layers of uh, thin painting that absorbs additional ground. So uh, we suggest uh, two. You can uh, choose, um, and again I will show you. So uh, polymeric or acrylic ones. They are. Where is that? They're quite. What the? I can't figure. You're, out. Okay. you're shining in the other direction. Yeah. So you can other. see they are quite um, uh, flat. And so the, the only problem is, so we do sell uh, Regal res resin and Laurapal resin, but we don't sell uh, other ones. So you can't make uh, your own. So again, you can buy from us because um, uh, the, uh, the acrylic uh, varnish is um, um, using both of them actually uh, quite, um, strong solvent and so you usually will not have that solvents at your uh, household that's why we uh we we don't uh, kind of recommend for you to to make your, your own and um uh, so uh but on another ones if you if you want to try Laurapal or regal res so then we do we do have uh, recipes on the website you can easy find um so uh, yes you can buy um and you can you definitely will have solvents at your home um by and so um uncle 60 asked if uh <laughs> if any of these varnishes can be used in a um, can be applied by spray we don't make them in a spray um we we don't think that spray cans really make good instruments for applying by spray i and, think he's mentioned then but, uh, but 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 yes you can take any of these resins and apply them with an air sprayer uh they usually we usually recommend a high pressure low volume sprayer and uh, which tends to be quite expensive type of equipment but if you have that then it's great and um we do recommend, however, that you dilute the varnish a little bit more uh, with the recommended uh, solvent. So uh, just dilute it a little bit when you do spray it because uh, it performs better that way. So Uncle 60 again, so uh, crawling varnish, that is my problem. It's the weird uh, only on light colors. You know, it's a, it's a phenomenon. Uh, it's um, again here's I will show you uh, this is uh, my Larapal and um, I'm trying to find the source of light and so it's interesting how it's on uh, on white and black it goes very smooth but once it's go to white it's suddenly crawling what you saying and um, just by brushing on same place so it it will help and it's uh, it's uh, apparently it's some reaction and uh, uh, in another since we are talking about cooling or protection the color so then another question we had will isolating uh, varnish help with alizarin protecting alizarin uh, from I, I'm sure uh, you you thought about light fastens and that's that's correct any any colors that tend to be fugitive such as alizarin crimson um, and any other colors like that definitely will benefit by applying a varnish that's always the case that's been repeatedly demonstrated so that's another good reason the, the main reasons for varnishing is to protect the paint film from dust and dirt it's and again these are aesthetic choices it's not a requirement it is, a, it is sometimes a wise idea, but sometimes you may not want a varnish on your painting for various reasons. However, 
Varnishing the painting protects it from dirt, dust, and the environment, which can be actually very damaging, especially These with days. modern air pollution. And it also helps to prevent, uh, or not prevent, but it helps to mitigate some of the uh, fading issues with some pigments. And I know someone was asking, I think, about turmeric, of course, which would be a, a fugitive uh, dye, and even if it was made into a lake pigment. So. Yes, that uh, it, there is a benefit in adding a varnish over over a paint film. So, Andrea, I you know again back to brushes. If synthetic brush doesn't work for you, uh, obviously, whatever brush you want to use, use it. Uh, my only concern about uh, the natural uh, brushes are quite expensive, uh, unless you're talking just a, a simple hug brushes, and so. But um, in our experience, hug brushes are uh, giving up uh, uh, the hair very often. And it's... And keep in mind, there's different synthetic brushes. So uh, the brush... We, we work on our brush almost year we've, to figure we've tested out this brush the, maker. There, there's not all synthetic filaments are made with the same materials. So you may be using the wrong material. So we have tested this particular brush that, uh, that we have made for us. Uh, in Europe um, with all of the solvents that we use and, and it performs quite well. Um, there's a, another uh, a question from Ku. Um, any thoughts of developing a water-based synthetic polymer varnish for egg tempera? Um, really, no, <laughs> frankly. Um, there are, of course, water-based uh, water acrylic uh, varnishes or isolating coats that is recommended for uh, varnishing acrylic paintings because acrylic paintings are very susceptible mm -hmm. to all the solvents in these varnishes. So even the acrylic varnishes. And so, um, uh, so you, uh, it is always recommended to apply a, a, an acrylic coating or isolating coating. And, these, uh, and they're now making a water-based, I know Golden makes a water-based one, uh, over an acrylic painting, and you may want to try that. I don't know if you have, and I, 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 I know you're in contact with the people at Golden, so um, uh, you may want to inquire about that. The only thing I can suggest is um, uh, we know that B72 has performed well. I was talking to Joyce Stoner at the Winter Theater Museum, and uh, she actually used a B72 over um, an Andrew Wyeth painting. Um, he didn't, he doesn't like gloss, um, so she uh, applied a B72 varnish over it at, at uh, very, um, uh, very low uh, strength, and I think it was about 15%, uh, and, uh, and was quite pleased with the results. So uh, that's an option. Uh, we are going to be making another varnish with the polyvinyl uh, resin, uh, which I know you tested and seemed to work well. So. That's another possibility. I know there's lots, the, unfortunately for egg temper artists, the, um, there's more issues involved because the varnishes tend to sink in more readily because the paint films are much more absorbent. Um, but we believe that polymeric resins tend to be much better overall, either the B72 or the polyvinyl uh, acetate resin. Uh, as an under, uh, as an isolating coating, and then applying a different varnish resin over that as a finishing varnish might be the best answer. Certainly for egg temper artists, Olifa, which is oil-based varnishes, is not recommended. Uh, not only because they're basically, if they are removed, they damage the painting, but they do yellow. So back to this, um, some manufacturers say then the varnish can be applied when the oil painting and uh, determined that to be dry as a fingernail test. Yes, I, I, I answered that a little bit earlier. I remember that a fingernail test is, is not a actual test for determining the dry stages of a paint film. There is an ASTM standard to determine the drying stages of <clears throat> organic coatings. Uh, such as oil paint, and, and, and it doesn't involve a fingernail because a fingernail can give you either a false positive or a false negative uh, in terms of the, the, the stage or the, the hardness of the paint film. So uh, in this article, uh, which is under the discussion tab in the Painting Best Practice, I do talk about that. Please read that article. We don't have time to cover it in this particular 
uh, episode of Art Materials mm-hmm. Advisor, but uh, please read that and, uh, and you'll be enlightened. But keep in mind, again, that recommendation can apply to some paintings and some painters, not everybody. And that's why the general rule, six months actually to a year, is what is always recommended. It's a solid based recommendation. I know that's not something artists want to hear, it uh, because uh, because always you know we're we're kind of always behind trying to meet our deadlines. So and here's uh, of course always always on <coughs> all our lessons we are telling you if you have questions call the uh, the companies and so because very uh, often you got just because for so many years uh, we had Gamvar and um, you know in our. Uh, studious and so then it was very uh, easy removable by mineral spirit so then you think then uh, any other varnishes will be removed uh, easy by mineral spirits it's not true so please um, if you have questions call us or or you know any other companies you use in varnishes because uh, they require different solvents and sometimes solvents what you don't have in your household and um, so we didn't uh, mention mastic varnish because it's quite lately it's of course not the most common varnish and so and uh, it it was the varnish at some uh, some time in history because uh, it was almost what available and uh, but it's yellow and badly so better do not uh use now we have all kind of synthetic varnishes why why to bother and if you still want to use the uh, dumber one so we do have with uv protector uh catherine uh, asks can you speak about varnishing a, I, I we spoke about this a little bit varnishing a painting that used varnish in the medium such as the ralph mayer formula Ooh, that come to ex- our class. <laughs> that's exactly the point I mentioned earlier, that if you use, especially if you use the same varnish over that painting as is in the painting, you're going to, uh, you're going to really damage that painting. That's why we do not recommend. Uh, unfortunately, the book that Ralph Mayer wrote uh, was a great book when it was released, but it has some very bad advice, and that's one of the worst ones that it's in there. And, and that's, the, that's the case, and I know I'm going to get uh, pelted with stones by the Marage people. The same case with Marage, don't use that because of the mastic resin in that varnish. And so uh, let's go back to applying the varnishes. The varnishes. So then if uh, we, in our line of um, varnishes, we don't have matte varnish. Uh, because uh, and again it's uh, I, I can't say it's a strategy but it's something what uh, George is working several years already and he's not still happy and that's why um, you, you are sometimes we, we hear that you're not ha- happy with matte, matte varnishes from other companies because it's not the best uh, way to apply uh, because what they they put uh, certain um, uh, um, it's an it's an additive additive yes yeah. so it's a, then it's fumed silica in most cases and so but i would uh, talk to, uh, right now about how to apply if you uh, want matte surface and if you do buy matte varnish so the first layer should be your regular isolating not matte but just glass or whatever you you choose the um uh, varnish so it it should not be matte or should not be satin if you want uh, to apply satin varnish so first one must be glass and the second one matte or satin and the reason why because if you again we explain uh, it's just visual so it's nothing um, chemical but it's visual appearance and so if you will apply two matte surfaces one on top of each other so uh, it will diffuse the light too much and so and then uh, your uh, painting will be too matte and it's uh, it's almost like frosted glass so that is trick so if you do uh, need a completely flat or matte look so apply first isolating varnish to protect the the uh, your painting and the second one um, the flat or matte varnish so um what else? Where, what, um, George, do you have any other questions? 
Um, yeah, there's lots of questions here. Okay. Um, uh, Philip asks, uh, Regal Res 1126, is this resin being explored for varnish use? It is, but it's usually for restoration of wood furniture, not on paintings. So that's uh, a good question there. Um, uh, are there any, Robert asks, are there any issues to consider for highly textured paintings? Uh, yes, <laughs> and that is uh, brush application is usually recommended as a first layer. Um, and, uh, and again, that's where it's gonna be very important to really carefully load the brush because uh, it, with texture, as the brush drags over the texture, it will tend to uh, remove some of the varnish from the brush and load it on one side of the texture and uh, deplete it on the other side, kind of like how rain falls on one side of a mountain and not on the other side. So, uh, so uh, uh, sometimes varying the brush stroke quite a bit will help by, in other words, doing it in random directions when you have textured areas. Also, following contours is sometimes done. And by the way, in our painting best practice webinar, we actually have an entire part of the course that talks about that, that goes into application and all of these different strategies. So uh, I do, you know, you, if you're very interested in that, we do recommend that. So uh, I, we already over time, and so then I, we don't want to overwhelm you. And so, but uh, here's one question, uh, how to apply the, uh, there is the difference between first layer and second, different angle. Uh, no, basically not. So you, it's it's always preferences of it's visual preferences so just uh as long as you put that first isolating varnish and that's uh of course uh, we already explained why it would be better to have two different resins because um, obviously you know in a uh, hundred years hopefully uh, they will clean your uh, painting so then they will remove first layer the second will uh, still protect your uh, painting but uh, to weigh how to apply, no, it's all, it's how you like it. Uh, Kip, hi Kip. Oh, hi Kip. Um, uh, is, he asks, is Neil's best uh, damper varnish come as crystals? Does it need a UV stabilizer? Here's the point, Kip. It's, uh, it is just damper, uh, but it's made in a very special way. Um, this varnish, he was making nine months, believe it or not. So it's like, you know, he's putting, he's, uh, he do does it. this in his uh, studio and so doing old way. Yes, in the, in the transactions of the um, um, Royal Society of Arts in London in, in excuse me, 1802, there is the actual uh, method of making it and the formula and we do it exactly the same way. And like Tanya mentioned, it's aged nine months. That's why it's special. Uh, there isn't any UV stabilizer in it, and, and we don't do that because it is a historical varnish. And like I said, we don't recommend that as a typical varnish, although you could put it conceivably over an isolating layer and use it, especially if you do like that. But just keep in mind, it will yellow faster than, let's say, the dammer that has the UV stabilizer. Andrea, yes, we do have, so I'm reading your question. And so uh, we do have this in painting best practices, how to apply the varnish. And on the end, George is showing, I think like seven different applications uh, and uh, it doesn't matter. It's your way how uh, I, uh, you can start from the, you know, corner or from the center and to go uh, all the way to the, the corners or from the one corner and finish to another. It's just your preferences and uh, how to apply this, the, you know, the triangles, squares, the strips. Again, it's only you how uh, you decide how to apply that. But we, we, de we definitely cover that on painting best practices, yes. Susan asks, Jennifer stacked her paintings after varnishing. Is it recommended? Absolutely not, but that's not what, uh, you may have not noticed it, but what she actually did was uh, they were actually touching on edge and she f had them facing down, which uh, is probably a good way to do it or tented as they're drying. So they weren't touching painting to painting. So you, of course, we never recommend that. Um, 
Let me see. Any is isolating vergers also a sacrificial layer and removable? At some point in time, yes, an isolating varnish, an isolating layer will be uh, a sacrificial layer and removed because it too will eventually get old. But the idea, since it's underneath another varnish, it's protected even more so from the environment. It'll last even longer. So the strategy again in that is to, uh, to avoid removing varnishes soon. So the longer you can keep a varnish on the painting without affecting the appearance of the painting, of course, the much better that is. So just wanted to again show that, uh, so here's uh, polymeric, oh no, acrylic varnish, and here's our Niels uh, Best Dummer varnish, and you can see the glass difference. So it's like just, uh, yeah, like this. Yeah, it's all your preferences. We are giving all choices for you. You choose. Uh, Todd, hi Todd. Uh, is there a difference in using isolating Laurel Paul versus polymeric as a first coat before using Conservar or Eagle Res as a final coat? Yeah, uh, the, the main difference, again, again, always keep in mind, the last coat is the final appearance. Yes. The glossy, how glossy it is, is always due to the last coat, as we've demonstrated in, in, in this video. Uh, but where you may want to use a polymeric varnish, or, or which is an acrylic base varnish, um, is where you have lots and lots of sinking in because it will, it will avoid more sinking in than the Laurel Paul. But the Laurel Paul does a reasonably good uh, uh, job at it, even though it's a low molecular weight uh, resin, it's a polydispersed resin. And so that's, um, uh, that's one of those reasons. Um, and again, uh, Cam, hi Cam, good to see you again. Um, it, um, uh, is it advisable to use one of these varnishes discussed here in painting on egg tempera? And, uh, the choice is yours. We always recommend, and by the way, we always recommend testing varnishes on your paintings first. And, and the main reason is because the solvents are always going to be different and each solvent may have a different effect. And that's also why, folks, you want to avoid varnishing early on because the painting is still polymerizing. Uh, as if it's an oil painting or even if it's an oil egg tempera painting, it's still uh, it's still polymerizing, uh, the, the proteins are, 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 are uh, linking, so this takes time and uh, you want to test the solvent before you proceed because, uh, and if the painting is very new, it will be more susceptible to the solvent. So let's uh, stop on this one. And so uh, again, if you were with us today uh, to the end of that session, so you will be gifted. <laughs> so we will give you a 10% discount on all our varnishes for next week. So it starts from uh, today uh, noon. And uh, so, and that um, the uh, code just for you uh, who on the other side of the camera. <laughs> so um, George, what would be the code? The code will be varnish2021. Okay. So 10% discount on all our varnishes on, uh, and uh, uh, resins. So if you want to, to play and uh, make your own varnish, that would be, we always encourage you. And so, uh, and when you will make a couple mistakes, you will come, <laughs> come back to us <laughs> and buy professional varnish. No, I'm joking. So please do, please experiment. And um, so, uh, because remember, varnishes are removable, and so uh, all our varnishes, what we sell, all of them are removable, and so then we will help you if uh, if mistakes are done. So remember, next Wednesday, uh, we talk about stretching canvases uh, and protecting uh, uh, your canvases from the backside, and um, so thank you again for being with us today. Uh, see you, oh, next, um, uh, next month on June, we finally will have our artifacts, um, um, professional, uh, panel making Antonio Hanlon here will be with us explain, 
um, how he has 22 different uh, surfaces and so what's the difference between every each of them and of course the all um, pluses uh, about panels versa uh, canvases so then and it's all about ACM or aluminum, a, aluminum composite, composite material and panels and copper panels otherwise so known will... as dye bond so yes. that will be very informative discussion there and you'll be able to ask the uh, master panel maker himself yes and so Anton and Hanlon. i'm sure he will probably sneak out some discount there too so but again we'll see that and so um see you next time and again thank you very much being with us bye, bye. Now.